totally my fault, but I really need you to uh, get not tired quickly out here. Oh, look at that roll! <gasps> oh my lord, I thought we were going over. Oh, I thought that was it. Good night, Hermes. Hi guys, welcome back to Sim UK and welcome back to Fishing the Barents Sea. What a fantastic game this is. I bet you can't wait for release on 7th of December 2018. It's going to set you back 19.99, and um, I think that's a good price for this. I really do. There's a lot of content here. There's a lot of uh, boat models and such, and it's one of these kind of games where you could easily put DLCs on the back of this. Easily, easily. Everybody wants more ships, everybody wants to be able to sail in more locations, everybody... Some people just want sailboats, you know, forget the fishing, just go sailing. There's a lot, there's a lot of opportunity here. But anyway, in this video we're going to check out the Hermes boat. Now, I haven't been on this one. Have I shown you all the boats before? This is the one you start with, this is the one your granddad has left you. Now, annoyingly, and I have mentioned this to the developers, when you come into this sort of preview of the boat look thing, you can't actually spin round more than that, which is really annoying. If you're going to buy a boat, you want to see the boat, you want to spin it round, you want to look at the whole thing. You know, all the animations there, all the ability is there to do that. I don't know why, why they restrict it to this much. But anyway, that slight bug, or irritation rather, aside, this is the boat that you start with. It's uh, something you've inherited from your grandfather and it does the job, but it does it pretty slowly. Let's put it that way. This is the Sharkin or Sarkin. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it. And basically, it's a modern equivalent of your grandfather's boat. Um, instead of being made out of wood, it's made out of this fiberglassy, whatever it is, this rubber, I don't know what it's called. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a bigger boat as well. It can, I think it has a, a crew member. You can have one crew member come in and gut in the fish. That's what this little, tiny little hut thing here is. Um, but yeah, uh, this is the, the upgrade and that'll set you back how much? 450,000 kroner. The Vibek, Vibeki Catherine. This is basically, again, I mean, look at that camera view. You can't even get a good proper look at it. It's so frustrating. Um, but yeah, this is like the next upgrade. It's basically, I mean, if you look at the image here, you can see it's just that one swollen up. That's basically what you've got here. The Lunar Bow, I've already done a video on this. This is, um, when I think of fishing trawlers, this is the kind of ship I'm thinking of. This is what I see in my eyes. But I suppose it's a bit dated. Um, this isn't sort of the newest style and model. I mean, you can see how progressively, how that one looks how the Vibeki class looks. I mean, they've got a similar sort of look and feel about them. And then this is kind of a bit old school, which is probably why I like it, because I'm old. Uh, but this is the Hermes. This is, now this is a sexy looking ship. One of the biggest problems with the Lunar Bow for me was handling, trying to get it out of the port, out of the dock. Oh, wow, did I have fun. Let's buy this baby. Due to the huge amount of fish that can be stored on Hermes, you are now required to freeze and stack all fish before selling them. You will need at least four crew members to effectively achieve this. Right, crew members, go to town. And it looks like we've only got, we've literally got four crew members, so we're just gonna employ everybody. Now, the higher price, I think, I'm, I'm not entirely sure how this works actually. I'm not sure if this is like a, a yearly wage. You're going to pay them 22,400 kroner a year or a month or, or whatever it equates to, I'm not sure. Or whether that's just an upfront payment. You would pay them that much. If they do a good job, a bad job, whatever, they go home with that. But if they do a good job, they get 6% of whatever your total fish sale earnings are. 5%, 3%, 4%. Now you can see that this guy He's not even halfway good, but he's taking 6%. And then all the way down here, where uh, 
This guy's only taking 3%. I mean, he barely knows what he's doing, does he? Really, <laughs> let's be honest. So, I mean, this game is very good. I, I like it in many, many, many... Oh, what does this say? Would you like to pay 15,200 krona now to hire Ruth Seymour? Every time you sell fish, they will take 5%. Yeah, okay. So it's an initial upfront price. That's fine. That answers that little question. Bank, we don't need to do anything. Bar, there's nothing going on there. Services. Now, this is this is something you don't get um, with the, the little granddad's boat. You, you still get the towing, the two top towing, but now we have insurance. And if your boat sinks, you will not be in reimbursed at all. Well, that proves that you can sink a boat then. Uh, Hammerfest Boat Insurance Company, reimbursement 65% of the value of your boat, 75% or 85%. 85%. But you have to pay 700,000 krona per year. Wow. I mean, that is tricky, isn't it? Why would you sink your boat, though? I'm just wondering in what circumstance sinking your boat could happen. I mean, if you're careful enough that you don't drive into anything at full speed, like land or another boat, then you should be okay, shouldn't you? But then that's a big risk to take. But then, let's be fair, how much is the Hermes boat? I didn't even look, did I? How much was it? A lot of money. A hundred thousand? Half a million? Something like that. It wouldn't take long before you have, like, you know, if you sailed for two years without paying any insurance, you could just buy another boat. Swings and roundabouts. Swings and roundabouts. Okay, I am taking too long here. Let's go to upgrades. That's what I was looking for. Right, uh, so let's upgrade the storage. That's 2.8 million. Oh, you can only buy them. Okay, so upgrades have to be bought incrementally. You can't just buy it in one go. Okay, so we're upgrading the engine. Maximum upgrade. We'll upgrade the radar. Scan ma trawl eye detects the rate of fish mass entering the net, measures the height of the trawl opening, the height from the headline to the foot rope, and the bottom contact or clearance. Now that's interesting. That's interesting because that sounds similar, and I'm not an expert, so correct me when I'm wrong, because I will be. That's got a similar sounding connotation that you would have if you were talking about uh, the seven to one ratio for setting up um, s setting up an anchor so that you can not weigh anchor because I've just been taught that that's wrong so that you can uh, set the anchor put the anchor down and, and anchor up basically or something I don't know right that's enough of my insane babblement scan my door sensor and control allows you to see the distance between trawl doors and gives you a small amount of control over their movement this is all stuff I don't understand Extra scanmar catch sensor indicates if the net is more than 20%, 40%, 60%, 80%. Side thrusters improves maneuverability by adding side direction thrusters. Wow, that's going to help me get out of this port so much. Okay, so that's all the upgrades and everything basically bought. Uh, oh, I see, that's how you swap between boats, you activate the ones you've bought. Right, let's activate you then, and let's go fishing. See, now you can actually see the boat itself. And uh, sometimes I feel like this game looks absolutely gorgeous, and then sometimes I think they could really do with just a higher quality texture on some areas. Sometimes I feel that way, sometimes. Okay, right. Let's see, how do I, let's go inside. Ooh. Well, this looks vastly different to the last one. To the lunar bow, let's jump off a second. Let's have a walk around here. Do you know, this game is so perfectly geared for multiplayer. I don't know if that's on the cards or not, but my goodness me. Oh, this is where you control the nets and whatnot. That's cool. Oh, that's nice. The door actually opens and you walk out. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but on the lunar bow, 
when I tried to do that, that wasn't an option. And it looks like I can walk right up to the front of the ship here, uh, which is nice. Again, on the lunar bow, I could not do that. So that's cool. Already I'm liking the, uh, the Hermes a lot more. Let's see if we can go down the side here. Now remember guys, this is my very first look at this boat, so anything I miss, please let me know in the comment section. Anything I don't cover properly or incorrectly comment on, just let me know. There's, that's our, our um, that's our, what the hell is that? Not a life raft, it's a, like, it's a speedboat, isn't it, basically? But it's, um, you know, in case we get into trouble and the boat sinks, it would be cool if you could deploy that. There was a game, you, you probably know what it's called, there was a game before about sailing and had all big ships and all sorts of stuff in it, and you could deploy these little ships off the side of it. So it's not out of, um, you know, out of opportunity. I think there's a good chance that that could work. What would be cool is if we have this all running and we can come up here and watch it. Watch the um, watch the crew sort of process the the uh, the catch, as it were. I'm looking forward to this one. I am looking forward to this one. It's interesting though that if you come around that side, you can't then uh, walk around. And this looks pretty icy. Was it icy when we started? I can't remember, or is it iced up over t you know since we've been parked here? That would be interesting. That would be like dynamic icing or something. Yeah, look at that. Again, you can come down, you can watch all the gearing working. This, the Hermes, seems to be far more complete than the Lunar Bow was. The Lunar Bow was quite restrictive in where you could walk, but certainly here on the Hermes, it's um, there's a lot more freedom on the ship. Ooh, suddenly went dark then. And again, it's a lighting issue. Bit of clipping there. Nothing serious. <laughs> Alright, let's go jump in the captain's seat once again. Um, yeah, I mean this... Why can't I get in there? Oh, there we go. Notice I've got stripes on my arms now. Proper, proper captain's jacket, no messing about. Yeah, if they turn this into a multiplayer, I'll be most impressed. Okay. Oh gosh those yeah one of those that looks good that's for the crew these are my lights don't know what that says that's my sonar I don't know what these are probably speedos and uh, fuel gauges unfortunately those binoculars don't work again that would be a nice feature binoculars um, a lot of this gadgetry that's for calling for a rescue if you're sinking, I guess, you'd, you'd put a mayday in. Yeah, it doesn't look like anything else is really that operational here. So I guess we can just start. Now, how do I use the side thrusters? That I don't know. We are... Oh, look at that. Is it kind of automatic? Because I didn't steer away from the dock. It's just kind of done it itself. No idea. Six knots is is the speed limit here, and we're up to six knots already, so I better just take the old speedo off. Now, as it stands, as it stands at the moment, and I assume for release, I could be wrong, um, there's no, there's no uh, fines for speeding in port, but uh, I have made that recommendation, so hopefully they'll introduce that. Um, don't foresee that being a, a huge amount of development cost uh, in order to add that and it would be a nice little realistic inclusion looks like my speed has dropped right down there I wasn't paying attention so we're coming out of port pretty rapidly we've got a long way to go by the way and uh, yeah I'm I'm comparing this primarily to the uh, to the lunar bow because I have no other ship really to uh, to compare it against but um, it does look like it's leaning the wrong way doesn't it when I steer right you'd expect it to lean left I 
doesn't do that. Okay, alright, we're heading kind of up in this direction. Because we're going to go out to sea. So if I just bring up the map, you can see how far we've got to go. We've got to go around this sort of oil uh, refinery and then up here to the open sea area, which is this open water they call it not open sea I don't know why I keep calling it open sea so yeah let's I mean we've got, <laughs> we've got a long way to go so don't worry I shall uh, I shall skip the video and do all that on my own and you'll just reap the benefits of my slow voyage wrong but it feels like there's a gap over here another thing that's cool that I didn't mention on the lunar bow is You'll see how the ship, although I'm steering straight, she isn't going straight. She is being affected by the waves and the current, possibly even the wind. You see how she's kind of meandering, veering to the right now. So she's going to come right of this marker any second now. In fact, before we get there, it catches on the ocean again and again we start pulling off to the left. That's cool. Tight, I mean, that's a tiny little feature that you could easily... Uh, miss, couldn't you? Let's just put the sonar on and make sure we've got enough clearance here. 50 metres, that should be fine, shouldn't it? I don't know what the depth of our hull is, to be fair. I don't think there's any way of finding that out either, is there? Yeah, I don't know. Okay, well, yeah, pretty good. Rolling away. A bit dark, which is annoying. It's only like 1.26 in the afternoon, so I'm not quite sure why it's so dark. Whoa, where are we going? Excuse me, Bo. Now this must be my side thrusters, I guess. I'll be honest with you, I don't know how to control the side thrusters. Not a clue. Getting shallow there, it still says 50 metres. Are we going to run aground? Because that's not 50 metres anymore, is it? That's shallow. I'm not sure if you can run aground, but I think we were pretty close to doing it there if you can. Alright, well this is definitely a shortcut, so I'm glad I took it. And uh, yeah, you may notice there's a, an enormous um, fuel tanker over there. Absolutely enormous fuel tanker. And it's cool that they've modelled things like that. I would love to see that coming down this channel here, for example and we'll have to avoid it, that kind of thing. That would be great. I don't imagine you'll be likely to see that um, before, in, in time for release, but in the future, when, when this game has gone absolutely viral and everybody owns it, maybe then we'll get to see some uber cool features like that, let's hope.
So guys, it's been quite a long, really very chilled out, nice experience sailing all the way out here to the open sea. Any minute now we get the little icon pop up here on the right and we can, uh, we can go to the open sea and see what this uh, trawler is like to fish with. Having a clue. Bearing in mind I've never ever ever taken this ship out. I don't know how to control it, I don't know how to use it. It's all very experimentational. Um, and there it is, there's the icon. Let's go to open water. Now visually not much looks different but one thing you will notice is that there's no land mass at all anywhere uh, and that is effectively what open sea is like I guess no matter which direction you look in there's nothing there now unfortunately I've arrived here in the middle of the night again it seems every I seem to time it that way every time which in the future I'll try and do a video in the daytime so maybe you can get a better look at this and again weather wise it's not that it's not that bad I was really hoping to get some seriously nasty waves and some dangerous weather but it seems we're, we're being very lucky in terms of fishing so um, well that's cool I guess that is cool I guess who left that flipping door open no wonder I'm so cold right let's give this a try then shall we we need to get the crew on first where's my phone where's the phone there it is so we'll get the cook on to set trawl, put them all on set trawl I think. Not sure what, what this sort of blue line represents, maybe she was that that far through cooking. I mean we've been sailing a long time so I can't imagine that's the case. But anyway there's the guys coming out onto deck. I know it's a very small feature but I do like that, that is a cool cool aspect of the game. Now this is my big information sensor thingy that I need to learn how to use before I can even look at it because I don't know what it means. Now on the lunar bow there was like a control panel deck thing that started the process rolling. Okay we've got some currently trawling so we've got set trawl net. There we go. You can see them dropping off the back there. And I'm not sure if the nets are animated, but you can see there were these two big, dark, whatever they were, doors or something here. And they've dropped off now, so that's, um, that's dropping the net down into the ocean. And uh, it's dragging along, hopefully picking up a few fish. We're just, we're playing it by ear, same as we did last time. Okay. The trawler net needs to be within 25 meters of the ship. So if I press E, that'll stop. That'll stop it going out. Now, if I ring the crew again, I think now if I set them to haul the trawl, we'll look at our information sheet and see if we can't figure something out. So that's the port door and that's the starboard door. And they're the big things on the side of the boat that have gone out. Now I'm not really sure what they represent in terms of anything really. Um, but they're... And maybe these are shoals of fish or something? I probably should have used the scanner to see if there were any fish. But look, we've got 62% full and 51% full. So, oh no, we're 10%... Okay, we're 10% full and depth is 59 meters and 73 meters so they're at very different depths at the moment that's because i'm not a good captain and i don't know what i'm doing so and this is an official scanmar uh, control panel this is exactly what you'd see if you were fishing in real life but we've got less than 10 percent there see how that was all going over to one side that's bad i i'm pretty certain that would snap the line if I'd let that go any further. In fact, we were pretty flipping close to it snapping right there, I'd say. Especially seeing as how one door is much deeper than the other. So yeah, the waves are getting a bit bigger. Is it just my imagination? I don't know. Right, now we're hauling in. Okay, alright, I got it. <clears throat> 
So we've got the. Uh, there's only three stages. There's only three stages uh, with this with the Hermes boat. It looks like. So we're waiting for the net and the doors to pop up out of the water. It is tricky to keep this thing straight. I am not kidding you now. Ruth is too tired to work. Ruth is too tired to work. Holy cow. That's a pretty serious issue. And these waves are definitely getting bigger, right? Incidentally, one of the most catastrophic ways to uh, lose a ship is a big wave coming up the uh, rear like this, washing over the deck and somebody's left the door open and it just swamps the downstairs. I mean, imagine how frightening that must be. Jeepers. Even if it doesn't sink you, you're not going to forget that in a hurry, are you? Right, okay. Right, now, I haven't been in this position before. So, that's Ruth. So she's resting because she's tired. The rest of the guys are fine. It's because she's been cooking for 16 hours straight. That was really stupid of me, wasn't it? And it seems like I can't get anybody else off. Because we're mid-thingy. Let's just try bringing her back out. You can see she's wandering back out there onto deck. Very tired. She doesn't really want to be there, I can imagine. How she feels. Me being an insensitive captain, having made a cook for <laughs> 18 hours straight whilst we uh, make our way out here. What's weird is, I, I don't know if we're meant to be moving forward or staying stationary to do this. Oh, Ruth is letting me down. Ruth is going back in again. She's too tired to work. And yeah, I mean, externally we've got some... I mean, these waves are rocking the boat a bit. Look at that. Oh, nice. Yeah, okay. I don't. I wouldn't call this bad weather, but yeah, these waves are definitely giving us a bit of a, a shake, a rattle and roll. Oh, crikey, look at that. We're going to lose that net if I don't steer this up. Come on. Come on, girl. So we're just, I'm just going to basically have to pull this thing along. I cannot get her straight. She is being pulled by the waves a lot here. Look how close these waves are getting to the crew. That is coming right the way up here. That one, <laughs> bit of clip in there. Oh, look how much we're rolling. This is getting dangerous now. Yep, that one definitely got them wet. Oh, wow! I, we could lose this ship. I'm concerned right now for the crew and for the ship and my own life. I really need Ruth to get not tired quickly. So we're in position. That much is um, achieved. Let's bring this up so I can see how she's getting on. Come on, Ruthie girl. Totally my fault, but I really need you to uh, get not tired quickly out here. Oh, look at that roll! <gasps> oh my lord, I thought we were going over. Oh, I thought that was it. Good night, Hermes. Is that her age? 53, 45, 70, 75? And 34? Could that be their ages? Really? Are there any 75 year old sailors still doing fishing, sea fishing like this? On trawlers and whatnot? How long should you be resting? Come on, Ruth, get out here. So they're only four metres in. Surely we can raise this now. It's all on Ruth at the moment. So that's, I suppose that's a good way of showing you how important it is to keep your crew happy. Rudy is now too tired to work. I have got the worst crew ever. But the annoying thing is that if I go to the crew control area, I can't move any of these guys. 
So they're just getting tired and there's absolutely nothing I can do about it. I can't raise the trawl net, I can't get into position. Am I meant to be stationary? Is that what the problem is here? It only just occurred to me, I don't know why. I think that's probably what the issue is, isn't it? I'm meant to be stationary. Okay, well now I am stationary, my crew are too tired to do anything, so... Everybody's as knackered as everybody else, so I'll let them all rest and then we'll have another go in a bit. Okay guys, so look at this. Um, even though you need to have four people on it, I've got two guys on it and it's come in. So being stationary was the main the main issue there, but there, is, there she is. Looks like a big long, I'm going to say snake. <laughs> I'm going to choose that term to describe what this is. But uh, yeah, look at that. That has been hauled up out the water. That seems pretty successful there. It's like um, what, what needed to happen there was me being stationary. So it really had very little to do with the, with the crew being tired. Right, so we've raised the trawl net. Now we're emptying the trawl net. We've nearly reached it. And we've pulled in 521 cod. Okay. Now the net appears to be returning back to its dormant state, I guess. I'm not sure the animation of that quite matches what we're seeing. but So that's it, guys. We actually pulled in some fish there. 521 cod. That shouldn't have taken as long as it did, but... Um, yeah, in my defence, I don't really know what I'm doing. So I've learned a lot today about the Hermes and how to um, how to do stuff with it. And um, yeah, it's it's a cool ship. There is no denying that. It's a super duper cool ship with loads of sea gulls. <laughs> Absolutely th flipping hundreds of sea gulls with it. Um, but that is cool. That is very cool. I've enjoyed this experience. I hope that you've got some something out of this video um, and remember this is pre-release so anything that you see here is subject to uh, being improved changed or removed um, for release day but I'm hooked. I'm hooked it's very difficult not to do jokes sort of um, puns when you're talking about this game because everything Everything positive that you want to say about it gets a bit fishy. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't even laugh at my own jokes, that's terrible. Listen guys, if you've got any comments, any thoughts, any suggestions, any feedback, let me know in the comment section, I'd love to read it. And um, please, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up button. And um, subscribe if you'd like to see more, that's kind of how it works. Till next time, take care, goodbye for now.